Good morning. The title of this presentation is a Cortical EEG Source Activity and Connectivity Related to Quiet Vigilance in Alzheimer's and Levy Body Dementing Diseases. You can see in this slide the main contributors of this presentation. No conflict of interest for these studies. In our studies, we uh, tested the EEG biomarkers of a neurophysiological mechanism of uh, quiet vigilance in Alzheimer's and Levy body disease patients. From the preclinical pre stages uh, without cognitive uh, symptoms and clinical manifestation to the prodoma stages of my cognitive impairment and then dementia. The EG activity was recorded in the resting state, ice closed and ice open condition, an ideal condition to study the regulation of quiet vigilance. The EG rims uh, underpinning the regulation of vigilance. Uh, were investigated by Hans Berger in 1928. He showed that in the resting state eyes closed and ample EG rings at, uh, at uh, the range of 8 to 13 Earths alpha rings um, were dominant in posterior areas of the scalp. When the subjects were involved in a mental activity or uh, ice opening, the uh, alpha rims disappeared and the uh, small oscillations at higher frequencies from 20 to 80 Hertz, beta and gamma, appear. The EG rims reflect cortical neural synchronization particularly from pyramidal neurons of the cerebral cortex. These neurons have a special orientation of the main dendrites, ideal for the summation of synaptic currents. This summation uh, reached the, the intensity associated to recordable EG activity at the scalp level. The time synchronization of the activity of these neurons were very important to, to allow the generation of waves in the EG activity recorded at scalp level. In contrast, an activity of these neurons, but not in a synchronized way, generate a flat EG. An approach to the study of resting state EEG is to study the interdependence of EEG activity at electrode pairs. Um, another approach is to study the connectivity of the sources of this scalp EEG activity. This uh, requires the use of uh, mathematical algorithms to take into account the head volume conduction effects. Uh, one should be very cautious to, to interpret the results of this uh, uh, procedure due to the lack of a unique solution in the solution of inverse problem. The dominant rim uh, in the scalp during the resting state as close is alpha. The alpha rings reflect the cortical inhibition um, and uh, may be generated by uh, the interaction between uh, cortical pyramidal neurons and the thalamic neurons. Animal studies demonstrated that electrodes implanted in the cerebral cortex and uh, in the hypothalamus in the thalamus, uh, showed ongoing alpha rings uh, related each other. 
And uh, now we think that the uh, thalamocortical and corticothalamic interactions generating EG rings can be modulated by ascending activated system, particularly those using acetylcholine as a neurotransmitter. The EG signal is uh, quite complex, but can be decomposed in uh, the elementary oscillations at different frequencies. And uh, this procedure allowed to uh, identify the individual alpha frequency peak in a given subject, showing the maximum power in the range of alpha rhythms from 6 to 12, 13 hertz. And uh, uh, the magnitude of uh, the single EG oscillations uh, can be represented in the EG power spectrum. What do resting state EG rings tell us about Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and dementia with Levy body? Um, in our study, we tested the hypothesis that the resting state EG rings reflecting cortical neurosynchronization and uh, connectivity may differ in Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and Levy body uh, disease patients in relation to the different clinical manifestation concerning the regulation of vigilance. These patients have different disturbances of uh, um, wake sleep cycles and uh, different impact of uh, uh, the vigilance on cognition over time during the day, the cognitive fluctuations. Another hypothesis was that those uh, EG markers of uh, cortical neurosynchronization and connectivity are not redundant and can enlight different mechanisms of the regulation of vigilance. Our studies were performed uh, by two consortia, the PD waves and the European disease uh, of Levy bodies. You see in uh, red the researchers uh, more, more active uh, in the EG studies in these two consortia. In our studies, uh, we recorded resting state the EG activity during ice closed and ice open from 19 electrodes placed according to 1020 electrode montage system. The artifact-free EG periods were used as an input for exact low rate of freeware to estimate the cortical sources of EG activity. You can see that we used large regions of interest in the frontal, central, parietal and temporal areas in the relation to the low resolution of our EG recordings. In this study, we compare the EG uh, cortical sources uh, in the resting state, eyes closed, in uh, normal elderly subjects, Alzheimer's disease with dementia, Parkinson's disease with dementia, and uh, Levy body disease with dementia. You see in this diagram the intensity of cortical source activation in the vertical axis. The, in the horizontal axis, you see the EG frequency bands from delta to gamma and the cortical regions of interest in the source space, frontal, central, parietal, occipital, and so on. In the normal elderly subjects, the dominant EG cortical source activation was in the alpha band, in the posterior cortical regions of interest. A dramatic reduction 
of alpha source activity was observed in Alzheimer's disease patients in red. You see that uh, intermediate level of uh, alpha source activity reduction <coughs> were observed in uh, Parkinson disease patients with dementia, Levy body disease with dementia, the posterior regions. In the delta range, you see low source activity in normal elderly subjects and uh, an abnormal increase in Alzheimer's disease patients with dementia, especially in the occipital region of interest, and uh, even higher abnormal activity in the sources of delta rhythms in Parkinson's disease and Levy body disease with dementia. So, Alzheimer's disease patients with dementia were characterized by a strong reduction of alpha source activity, and Parkinson's disease and everybody disease patients with dementia were characterized by uh, an abnormal increase of delta source activity. We uh, tried to replicate this uh, pattern of source activity in the prodromal stage of Alzheimer's disease and Levy body disease, the stage of my cognitive impairment. You can see that in this study, again, the normal elderly subject showed the dominant alpha source activity in the posterior areas, and that the Alzheimer's disease patients with my cognitive impairment showed the lowest alpha source activity that the uh, levy body disease with myocarditis impairment show intermediate level, very similar to the study on uh, patients with dementia. And uh, similarly, we observed uh, the highest abnormal increase in delta source activity in uh, uh, Levy body disease with my cognitive impairment when compared to Alzheimer's disease and normal elderly subjects. So we replicated the results obtained in dementia patients. In the same line, we tried to replicate the results observed in dementia in the Parkinson's disease patients with my cognitive impairment. Again, in this study, the dominant alpha source activity was observed in the posterior areas in normal elderly subjects. And uh, again, Alzheimer's disease with myocognitive impairment showed the lowest alpha source activity in posterior areas. And uh, the Parkinson's disease with myocognitive impairment showed intermediate level of alpha source activity. And again, the highest abnormalities in delta source activity were observed in Parkinson disease with my cognitive impairment over Alzheimer disease and normal elderly subjects. So we replicated the results obtaining dementia patients, showing that these features were uh, observed also in the prodromal stages of the diseases at the early stages. So we reanalyzed the data uh, to investigate the cortical source connectivity in the EG activity recorded in the resting state eyes closed condition. In the diagram, you see the magnitude of uh, uh, cortical source activity in the vertical axis. Again, we have the frequency bands from delta to gamma. And uh, in the interhemispheric source connectivity analysis, frontal region means left frontal against right frontal. And the same is true for central, parietal, and so on. The connectivity between homologous regions of the two hemispheres. And uh, you can see that the dominant source connectivity was observed in uh, 
alpha rims in normal elderly subjects in the posterior cortical regions of interest. And the lowest source connectivity was observed in alpha rims, was observed in Alzheimer's disease with dementia. Intermediate magnitude of alpha source connectivity uh, between the two hemispheres were observed in uh, Parkinson disease with dementia and Levy body disease with dementia. In contrast with the study on uh, cortical surge activation, we didn't show uh, an abnormal increase in uh, delta range in Parkinson disease. You see here that the abnormal increase in the source uh, connectivity in uh, delta range was observed in Alzheimer's disease in red, rather than, for example, Parkinson's disease. So, in uh, the big cortical source activation in delta range in Parkinson's disease uh, uh, with dementia, was a local process not related to connectivity between cortical regions of the two hemispheres. Similar results were obtained when we uh, analyzed the cortical source activity within each hemisphere. In this case, frontal cortical region means the connectivity between the sources in the frontal areas in relation to central, parietal, occipital, and temporal within each hemisphere, the intrahemispheric analysis. You see that the highest level of uh, intrahemispheric source connectivity in the resting state as closed was observed in normal elderly subjects in all cortical regions. And the lowest source uh, connectivity in the alpha range was observed again in Alzheimer's disease patients with dementia. Parkinson's disease with uh, dementia showed the intermediate levels of alpha source connectivity uh, within each hemisphere. And uh, Dementia with Levy body and dementia showed very similar results to Alzheimer's disease patients. So a similarity in the connectivity in these uh, two diseases. In another study, we uh, investigated the cortical source connectivity in the resting state as closed in the programmal stage of Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease. Again, we observed uh, between the two hemispheres the dominant source connectivity in the alpha range in normal elderly subjects. But surprisingly, the, there was uh, a decrease in uh, uh, alpha source connectivity in uh, both disease groups Parkinson's disease with MCI and Alzheimer's disease with microcognitive impairment, MCI. There were no differences between Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease with mild cognitive impairment. This was something different from the dementia case. And we uh, interpreted this uh, evidence as a sort of uh, um, resilience of uh, alpha source connectivity in Alzheimer's disease patients in the prodromal stage of dementia. There was a reduction, but not a complete deterioration. Surprisingly, we didn't see any significant increase in delta source connectivity in Alzheimer's disease with MCI and Parkinson's disease with MCI. So again, a demonstration that in the delta range, the increase in cortical source activation was a local process, not related to connectivity. Very similar results were, were found in the source connectivity analysis 
in each hemisphere in Alzheimer's disease with the my cognitive impairment and Parkinson's disease with my cognitive impairment. There was a reduction in uh, source connectivity in alpha range in both groups, but no difference between Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. And again, no increase in delta source connectivity in uh, Alzheimer's disease patients or Parkinson's disease patients. In another study, we repeated this investigation in uh, patients with uh, Levy body disease and my cognitive impairment with very similar results. Maximum of a source connectivity in normal elderly subjects between the two hemispheres in the posterior areas. And uh, uh, similar decrease in alpha source connectivity uh, between the two hemispheres in Alzheimer's disease with my cognitive impairment, Levy body disease with uh, my cognitive impairment. Very similar, very similar. No difference. And uh, again, no difference between Alzheimer's disease and Levy body disease with my cognitive impairment in the delta range. And uh, similar connectivity in uh, the disease and normal elderly subjects in several uh, regions of interest. Even uh, in the intra-hemispheric analysis of uh, source connectivity, we observed uh, the maximum values of alpha source connectivity in normal elderly subjects in blue, and uh, a clear reduction in the two graphs but the differences uh, were not significant between Alzheimer's disease with my cognitive impairment and Levy body disease with my cognitive impairment. Very similar. And again, no significant abnormalities in the delta source connectivity between uh, Alzheimer's disease and the Levy body disease and uh, normal elderly subjects. In this diagram, uh, we represented the spectrum across Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. You see in the left side, uh, in Alzheimer's disease, the abetamyloid deposition and uh, tauopathy characterize Alzheimer's disease. And uh, the typical genetic risk factors in Alzheimer's disease APP, presently 1, presently 2, you know, familiar Alzheimer's disease, and APOE, in sporadic Alzheimer's disease. In the Parkinson poll, in the right side of the diagram, you see the accumulation of alpha synuclein uh, um, into the cells in the Levy body. Uh, and uh, the genetic risk factors SNCA and GBA in Parkinson's disease with dementia. The Levy body disease uh, show, showed uh, mixed mix features uh, in relation to Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease with the uh, similar genetic risk factors with Alzheimer's disease and, some, and Parkinson's disease. And uh, some uh, uh, amyloidosis and alpha synuclein profiles in, uh, in uh, Levy body disease. When we consider our EG results uh, of uh, cortical sources of resting state EG rims uh, uh, at eyes closed, we see that Alzheimer's disease was characterized by a strong reduction of uh, cortical sources of alpha rims. And uh, uh, an abnormal increase of uh, delta source activity in the Parkinson's disease patients. 
and the Levy body disease patients show a mixed alpha source activity and delta source activity with similar features in relation to Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. So halfway when uh, compared to Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease with dementia. Concerning the EG source connectivity results, we observed just a decrease of alpha source connectivity in Alzheimer's disease with dementia as a characterizing features uh, in comparison with the uh, heavy body disease and Parkinson's disease. So this was the, the, um, a feature characterizing the dementia stage of Alzheimer's disease, but not the prodromal stage of my cognitive impairment. And uh, we interpret this uh, evidence as a, a certain resilience of uh, alpha source connectivity in the prodromal stages. We have a reduction, but not so strong um, in micrometic impairment condition uh, in relation to Levy body disease and Parkinson disease. So uh, another interesting result that was that uh, there were no strong uh, abnormalities in delta source connectivity uh, in uh, Parkinson disease, uh, Levy body disease. Uh, and uh, even in Alzheimer's disease. So delta source activity uh, may be a local process related to low connectivity in the cerebral cortex. In conclusion, uh, delta and alpha source activities uh, related to uh, resting state, e.g. rinse uh, at eyes closed, uh, showed substantial differences in Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and Levy body uh, groups. And we observed these differences uh, in both prodromal stages of the diseases and dementia stages, indicating a substantial difference of a neurophysiological mechanism of a cortical neurosynchronization and regulation of white vigilance in the different diseases. Alpha source activities and connectivity uh, are not redundant each other, and uh, the alpha source connectivity may be resilient in the prodromal stages of Alzheimer's disease um, in relation to Parkinson's disease or Levy body disease. We think that the, our results encourage the use of this methodological approach of uh, resting state cortical sources in uh, clinical trials of uh, Alzheimer's disease, uh, Parkinson's disease, uh, and uh, Levy body disease patients, even in the prodromal stages. Here we, you can see my co-workers in uh, Sapienza University of Rome. Thanks to them for these studies. And you can see here our European funds supporting our research. Thanks for your attention.